Now, I know that the July Fest, as you said, is now uh, 16 years old, started around 1991. And uh, the housing was a lot different there than it is now. Uh, there's now one and two family townhouses. It's It's got to be much better. You've been there in both situations. Mm -hmm. Improvements in the neighborhood? Yes, yes. Much improvement, better improvement. I love it, you know. I've been there, like you said, from McGloy Manor and Pioneer Homes to now what is just the Eport community. You know, no more, oh, you live over here in that project, live over there in that project. Now we live in beautiful homes, and I'm so glad. You know, at one time, long time ago, I thought maybe I'd move away from the port. But then I thought about it, hey, the port has always been my playground. I love the port, so I'm not moving. And I thank God that the changes have came, and I thank God that you as the mayor has opened your eyes and looked at also helped make the port a beautiful place. Now the July Fest for our viewers is when again, July? It's July 18th on a Wednesday, rain or shine. Come on out. What time does it start? It starts from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We block off the street and we have a great festival. Yes, yes, we do. Um, do you work with other events during the course of the year, Winona? Not really, unless it's something someone is doing and they will call for us <clears throat> to come in and help them out. And there's usually like five of us that generally uh, goes out. It's a group of us. We go out and we always help anyone else who wants to have, if they have an activity and they want us to help them. We have helped out um, the, the Elizabeth Presbyterian Center, Troy Hudson, when he was there. He was doing the back-to-school summer thing, and he asked us to come out and help out. We have done that. If we're able to help out with uh, um, Pride Day, we'll do that. Anybody, if they need us to help us out, help them out. No the Pride Day has grown as well yes. from what it started yes. out years ago to now with the parade and the food and everything that happens on Eport Pride Day. It's, uh, it's grown tremendously. Mm -hmm. And, you, and you, you're enjoying your service on the Housing Authority. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I love it. Good. You know, I've always been a person who always wanted to look out and help other people. And hey, when I needed help, someone was there for me. Well, Nona, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us on the show this evening. I look forward to seeing you at July Fest. And, uh, hopefully I can wear an a apron that day and cook. i got to make sure it fits in. Oh, don't worry. If you don't, we might have one for you, another That's one. Right. updated one. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I also want to thank you for your service, not only on the July Fest, but your service to Elizabeth Housing Authority and the hours that you volunteer to make the Eport community a better place in which to live and work. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome back to our city. For the second half of the show, I'm pleased to be joined by Robin McHugh and Nadine Breckner from the Trinitas Health Foundation. Robin, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Now, you're the executive director? I am. Oh. Well, I am the chairman. You're the, the chairman. Oh, and the Nadine, OCO. you're the executive director. Yes, OK, and I mixed those titles up. Sorry That's about okay. that. Robin, you've recently become the chairperson of the Trinitas Hospital Auxiliary. Please, And this is all volunteer, right? Yes. What do you do? Well, Besides I Besides spending a lot of hours helping Trinitas. Well, here's what happened. I started as a volunteer with Trinitas years ago. When I was 15, I started as a candy striper. That's and not I'm, years ago. That's oh, just, yeah, that's <laughs> years ago. And about three years ago, I got a phone call from the chairman at the time, who was Gloria Pesertia, and she asked me if I'd be interested in helping in the auxiliary. And at the time, I was raising my family, so I really wasn't looking for anything else on my plate, but I went. And it took me, oh, maybe about an hour. And everybody was so warm and so welcoming that it was just, I fell right back into the family of Trinitas Hospital. Nadine, before I get to you, i got to ask you another question. You used the word candy striper, and now you're really dating yourself because <laughs> are they still there, candy stripers? They I have volunteers. That. No, I don't think they have candy stripers They don't stripers call anymore. them. No. Do you remember the term candy oh, striper? absolutely, yes, Were you a candy striper? Uh, no, because actually I was a little <laughs> afraid of hospitals until I came to Trinidad. Now I feel comfortable. But uh, wow. When you said time. that term, I have to tell you, I haven't heard that in such a long well, time. Well, that's how I started. I was 15 and in high school. And a candy striver. <laughs> yes. And, and Nadine, uh, your involvement with your auxiliary? Well, the auxiliary is an, an integral part of the hospital. They are our champions, like you. And, you know, I know that wherever you go, Mayor Bulwidge, we are our only hospital in Elizabeth, and you tell people about them, well, so do the auxilians. They talk about our cancer center to people, they talk about our wound healing center, our sleep center, and they really are a part of the fundraising arm of the hospital. So they've this year designated that they're going to raise money for our new inpatient oncology floor. 
And before that, they've helped with renal, they've helped with coats for children who've needed it, they've helped with behavioral health programs, and really have been a, a tremendous uh, resource to the community. Really now, now, Robin, you went from a candy striper to leaving volunteer service and then coming back, or well, did you I continue went, your volunteer I service? Was, I lived in Elizabeth all my life, so I went to nursing school, became a nurse, worked there as a nurse, and then raised a family. Okay. And then uh, about three years ago, got the phone call, and here I am. They tapped you on the shoulder, right? <laughs> they kind of did. Come, they said, come on home. So how, how would you describe your auxiliary and its members? You know, everybody comes from different walks of life. Um, some have raised families. Some are raising families. Some don't even have families. A lot of them have been patients at the hospital. A lot of them have had friends that have been patients. And once they get to the hospital and they see the community and the love in the hospital and the caring part of it, they don't want to leave. They want to be part of that. And that's exactly what happened to me. Now, do you need to motivate them at all, or do you think they, they, they in order to do this, they're basically self-motivated? I think they're self-motivated. I think there are people who, who have seen that by giving, you get a heck of a lot more in return. So, you so know, the enrichment programs to the community. Uh, we have several programs, and we're not the only ones. There's different departments of the hospital have a lot of enrichment programs. Um, we've had some on a program on osteoporosis. We've had some on women's health. Um, we've had one fitness over 50. Um, if I can, I'll read some of them that are coming up to you. We have on July 10th, we have eating disorders that are coming up. Uh, breast health on July 11th. We have organize your future July 17th. And we have on July 26th, skin rejuvenation. So this applies to everybody across the community. Um, some of them start at 11.30 in the morning, some of them start at 5.30 in the evening. So we're reaching out to everybody. Now, on the breast health, do you encourage uh, examinations Absolutely. at that as well with mammograms? Absolutely. Do. Absolutely. And for men, we encourage that they go for prostate tests. I mean, it's, it's really a community-based program. Well, breast cancer can occur in men as well. It's, Absolutely. It's a lot of people, and I, it's I've done some known. PSAs on that. And, yeah. Uh, and it's just... Men aren't aware of that. They're not aware of it. And it's up to them, and it's up to the women in their lives and, and their other men's brothers, fathers, to tell them. We've actually just gotten some new equipment for that, too. We have now a digital mammography mm -hmm. opportunities for people who in our community, and that helps with younger women who are now coming for the breast screenings, and it's also for women with brent, uh, des, uh, very dense breasts. So now, are they provided free to under uh, certain times of the yes. year or somehow? Or? No, through our outreach, you know, anyone can come into our hospital at any time of day or night, and they'll be helped with whatever diagnostic test they need or whatever else. So if they need an exam on, on that issue, it would be yes. made available. Especially yes. if they're afraid. I mean, you know, people are afraid to do this, and we're there to help them. Um, as Executive Director, Nadine, tell us about the auxiliary and the, and the people in you know, the communities. I mean, Robin's done a good job. <laughs> I but Nadine, I have yet to hear you ever say a bad word about anybody. Well, so I don't think you're going to say a bad word about them. But I, because what, it's true. When do you, your levels of excitement are always at this level, very high. <laughs> because I work with the best people. They're all the, like yourself, they're all the people that want to help other people. So I'm very lucky. You're right. I love coming to work every day. The Exilians are a very devoted group of people who want to make a difference for the people in Elizabeth and the surrounding communities. They're all people who recognize the value of having an, uh, a first class hospital in the city of Elizabeth. You now, know. I participated in uh, last year in the smoking thing. Was that yes. something the auxiliary would have done, do you remember? It or? was part of our outreach, but not particularly for the auxiliary. You know, Nancy DiLiegro runs an outreach right. program also through her uh, department, and that's where some of the seminars And I did a colon cancer thing as well. Yes. That, that's not part of it. No, but we tried to provide health seminars on all the topics that we know our community needs, and you were kind of at that point in life where uh, we were encouraging uh, colonoscopies for people. Well, but I've been doing it for years because that's right. what my father died from. Right. So. Right, so I go that. for that. But, um, but you're a good spokesperson. You're, you're, thank you. Your, your role in the auxiliary, do you actively engage with Robin in any way? Or? Yes, the auxiliary reports to me at the foundation. They're part of the fundraising arm, and we're very excited. Um, they've been paying a pledge that they've had to the capital campaign every year. They've been very devoted. It's because people really recognize the services that the hospital provides and want to help.